Mic check. And <clears throat> mic check, mic. Mic check, mic check. Oh my goodness, what am I, what am I even doing? YouTube friends, what is going on? We are back, brand new uh, video. And uh, apologize if you hear some pounding here and there. My neighbors have been doing construction for about a week and a half now, probably another another week or so going on. Uh, and again, I only have so much time to make these videos, so hopefully you don't hear too much of the banging and drilling. Um, but anyway, today we're talking about uh, my FX9 build. Uh, I bought my FX9 in June, May of 2021. Uh, it's been through some iterations uh, build-wise, but this is pretty much my uh, most up-to-date uh, build in 2023. This is what I call uh, studio mode. So basically studio mode is where, you know, cameras will be on the tripod for majority of the day. Um, again, if, if, they have to, if I have to take it off for handheld work, uh, we have uh, an easy way to go handheld via easy rig. Um, and some certain things I would probably take off in order to make it a little bit more accessible for um, for use for, for handheld work, right? Uh, but again, let's kind of just go through um, the the gist of, of the build. Now for starters, I wanted something that I could go from you know handheld to studio mode, back to handheld, back to studio mode, um, as there are times where you, know, you want to be able to get uh, some quick insert shots or some quick um, B-roll shots, uh, or you already know that you know the first half of the day we're gonna be doing interviews, second half of the day we're gonna be doing uh, some some insert shots, some some beauty shots, some hero shots, and then perhaps uh, some quick interviews, right? Depending on the type of project, if it's a corporate setting, if it's a documentary, branded documentary, um, for for commercial stuff, usually like we're, if we're not doing any sort of um, interview style um, setups, lighting setups, then this will probably be more more like handheld. Uh, slider, dolly kind of setups, right? Sticks and we're just panning and tilting, things like that, right? Um, but I needed something where I could, you know, quickly rig stuff, right? So let's talk about uh, the cage first. So the cage, uh, it's uh, it's a Frankenstein cage. Uh, it is the Tilta full cage for the FX9 with a, a small rig uh, top top plate. Um, and, and I'll kind of see, you can kind of see what that looks like with the, uh, the insert shots that I'll take, but essentially it kind of all revolved around, uh, this top handle, which is the bright tangerine, uh, D style top handle. I really wanted to make this top handle work, but the thing with the Tulta, you know, full cage for the FX9, which is actually really, really great, um, for the price, it's a really great cage, right? It's a full cage and, and a side cage. But the thing is, it leaves a little gap in the middle where the top handle goes. The way that the engineers designed it, no fault of theirs, is they left the middle slot open so that way you can use the OEM Sony FX9 top handle. Uh, that top handle I haven't used since I bought the camera um, because you don't have any lot of, you don't have any mounting options. Also, since I use the Easy Rig. Uh, quick release ball system. There's no way I can use that top handle. Uh, the top handle does have a quarter 20 at the back of it, but that means that I'm only limited with putting um, all the all the the weight for the easy rake in in a weird spot, you know, because I only have that one spot to put the the ball uh, the ball mount, right? So again, I was like, man, over the years, it, I kind of struggled where I've used like the frog bean carabiner system. I've used just the regular. Uh, standard easy easy rig quick release uh, clamp, the one that it comes with. Uh, and you know, over time it's like, man, yeah, I really wish I had something where um, I, I, I like this this top handle style a lot. Uh, the Airy Pro set has this. I, I think that's the only one that has it minus Sprite Tangerine. The tilted cage, the back of it doesn't sit flush anymore because I have to kind of jam it in between the small rig top plate, but the small rig top plate has quarter 20s, it has three eighths holes um, to be able to put magic arms or cold shoe mounts, things of that nature. Um, and also allows me to put uh, that middle the middle plate where I could put the my Bright Tangerine D-style top handle. As far as power goes, the tilted plate has a lot, right? It has three D-tap ports. It has a five volt uh, USB port for charging things, right? Uh, I never use it. It has two Lima ports on the top, which are great, they're two pin Lima ports. And also the back plate, extends out so it's an easy way for you to uh, balance the balance your fx9 build uh, without having to uh, move anything else monitor wise my monitor of choice is the small hd indy 7 um, I, was, I still have my old 702 bright which is 
kind of more like a director's monitor, like a field cage monitor setup. Uh, and then every now and then I might put the Ninja V on here just depending on, on what I'm doing. Um, but I have this attached to, I have this small HD ND7 attached via a magic arm, small like magic arm, uh, to one of the 3 8 holes on the, uh, on the top plate for my FX9. The viewfinder is pretty much just using the standard rod system. Um, there are better options out there, but uh, the viewfinder, it, it, it's, it's, you know, I mean, it's okay. It's not the greatest viewfinder, even the one in FS7 wasn't, it's pretty much like the same thing. It might, it might be a little brighter, but again, I'm, I'm not, you know, using this thing. I'm not using the viewfinder for critical focus or things like that. Um, it's really just there in the event where say, for some reason, the SDI just isn't working, um, or um, there's some complications with the wireless going from SDI out, and you know I'm trying to troubleshoot things, um, and I still want to be able to see the monitor. So a great way to to troubleshoot things is just to have the viewfinder um, already attached. And so this is pretty much what I have uh, set up. Again, not the not the best solution. It's using the OEM stuff, um, but it, it gets the job done. Next thing I have is a little cold shoe um, attached to the, the right side of the top plate for the FX9. And this is generally where I would put my Sennheiser G4 when I do need to run camera straight into, when I do need to run camera straight into the camera, when I need to run audio straight into the camera, smaller budget shoots, maybe docu shoots, things like that where um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm monitoring audio or running audio. Um, so we'll have that culture out there, it just kind of saves time. The wireless transmission system from DJI, and I have the uh, the Tulta gold mount, um, I don't even know what it's called, like like power plate basically. So I have it attached to the back of the uh, my FX9 via gold mount. And then from there I have my shark fin unit, uh, which I can attach uh, to uh, gold mount batteries to the sides of it. Uh, the shark fin isn't, I mean, it's relatively inexpensive. It gets the job done. Uh, it's not the most like, you know, sturdiest of, of shark fins, but again, I've used it in handheld mode. I've used it um, studio mode and, and, and it works fine. It has two uh, D taps on it as well. So extra power. Um, the, I would say the DJI transmission, like the gold mount thing, isn't, isn't the most secure, um, secure mount. I wish, uh, I wish it was a little bit more secure, but again, it keeps everything towards the rear of the camera rather than having to mount, uh, you know, normally I would put like a, another magic arm on the top plate and then mount the wireless transmitter there. Things get kind of clunky, especially if you're working handheld, you can only hold the handle in certain ways, you know? So it puts everything in the back where, um, at least I know I, uh, it's out of the way for my hand. I'm going handheld, uh, and also just kind of keeps things a little bit more, more neat and tidy. Other than that, I think just little knickknacks. I have uh, some Velcro at the top here because usually uh, audio guys are, they're always trying to find a way to put their electrosonics or their uh, their, their time code uh, generator on here, right? So I, I just leave it here. Usually there's like three of them on here because audio guys just leave it here. Um, but I took out, uh, I, I've, I've, just, I've just isolated down to just one Velcro so they could put uh, you know a tentacle sync or Electrosonics PDR, whatever you want on here. Uh, and then I have the orange uh, sprigates, which are great for cable management. Um, you can, I forgot how much it is, but I highly recommend, recommend them for cable management. Even if you have like a small camera, mirrorless or, or a Blackmagic pocket camera, right? If you have a cage, you have quarter twenties, the little uh, sprig cable management things are, are great because it keeps everything again, contained, everything neat, very organized. If you're wondering how I get the camera onto the tripod in the first place, uh, the, the Tilted K does have a VCT shoulder pad underneath it. And then, you know, underneath that, it's VCT plate. So you can attach it to your Sony VCT plate or Zakudo or Shape, whatever VCT plate you have on there. Uh, and then my my tripod of choice is the Sackler uh, Flowtech. Uh, this is the 75 bowl version. Um, with the Active 8 head. The Active 8 head I like a lot because it's uh, it's held everything from a fully built out Venice to my fully built out FX9 to my Komodo, uh, my Komodo build, which I, I will be doing a Komodo build for you guys in the near future. And uh, I mean, it holds it just fine. I've never had any issues with it. And then the if you don't have Flowtech legs or I know uh, O'Connor makes them as well too. Uh, they're, they're the same freaking thing, right? But the Flowtech legs are like in, invaluable. You know, I, I would say like if anything, invest in the legs as, as, as fast as you can. And then from there, if you want to get an Active 6, maybe you have like um, an Active 6 just has a, a lower payload. But again, maybe you have an FX6 or you have something in that, you know, range. I think even my Komodo, I've used it on the on, on an Active 6 head before and it worked just fine, you know? But again, since I have an FX9, I need something that can play in both worlds. 
Okay, I think that does it for the FX9 build. If there's any like specific thing that I that I, you have a question on that I missed out, um, please let me know. I'll leave a comment down below and I will do my best to answer that for you. Other than that, if you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel as always just so you're notified of new content coming out. And uh, remember, every day you have an opportunity to create your experience and try and tell your own story. My name is David Lee and I will catch you guys in the next YouTube video. Sorry, I've been watching too many of those uh, uh, biographies of WWE wrestlers. <clears throat> I used to love like WWE when I was a kid, Hulk Hogan, Jake the Snake, and then uh, later on The Rock and Steve Austin. So I don't know, I'm just, just, just in the mood, man. Okay, bye. Thank you.